Hello, today I'm gonna be talking about surgical knot tying in wound closure. Surgical knot tying is an essential technique in ER or OR surgeries. When the wound tension is high or the gap is very wide, the suture often gets loose, and additional knot push would result in too tight skin tension. Too loose or too tight skin tension would result in scar formation or infection. This video presents how to adjust suture tension during knot tying. The details of each surgical knot will be introduced in other videos. Each procedure depends on surgeon's dominant hand or knot tying procedure, but the principle to adjust suture tension is common in all procedures. This is my introduction. This channel will provide variable skills in your daily clinical work. Please give thumbs up and subscribe if you like. Okay, let's go to the lecture. In demonstration, the silicone artificial skin with a large gap is used. The surgeon is right-handed. First, I'm gonna be talking about simple suture. Pass the suture into the skin. A simple knot is formed by two-handed knot tying. Pulling the both ends of the suture in one line approximates the skin and increases the suture tension. Once the suture tension is decided, with pulling the left hand, bring the right hand back and pull it downward and the tight knot is locked by friction. After you release the left hand, the suture tension will be held. Now you can use your left hand freely. The suture knot is secured by additional knots formed by one-handed knot tying. The left end should be pulled vertical to the suture line. Don't push the knot parallel to the suture or the knot may slip on the suture and tension will become too tight. After you secure the knot, both ends are pulled vertical to the suture line. The surgical knot can be locked by the same procedure more efficiently. Form a surgical knot by adding another knot after two-handed knot tying. Set the suture tension. Bring the right hand back and pull downward. The knot is locked. Because the locked area is larger than in simple suture, the tension is locked more efficiently. The additional knots are added by the left hand. Next part is instrument knot tying. In instrument knot tying, you should release the both ends of the suture when you wrap around the needle holder. And the suture size is smaller so, a more secure locking technique will be needed. Basically, the first knot is a surgical knot. Wrap the needle holder twice and form a surgical knot. Set the suture tension. Pull the left hand end back and pull downward the knot is locked. Then, another end with the needle holder is pushed forth to form another lock. Release the both ends of the suture. The tension is held. The knot is secured by additional instrument knot tying without pulling the suture ends.
and the next part is buried suture. This time the surgeon is right handed, start the skin closure from the left side, put the suture under the skin, First knot is formed by one-handed knot. Pull the suture parallel to the wound and increase the suture tension. After you set the tension, by pulling the right hand end toward the outside continuously, you can hold the tension by friction and you can release the left hand. If you pull the suture end too strongly, the suture will slip through the skin. With pulling the right hand end continuously, the knot is secured by one-handed knot tying by your free left hand. Send the knot underneath along the right hand suture. After the knot is secured, additional knot tying is performed. What if you start the wound closure from the right side of the wound with the same procedure? You should set the tension in the narrow space. And it's also difficult to send the knot underneath from the narrow side. In buried suture, you should decide from which side to start considering your knot tying procedure. In buried suture with instrument knot tying, the tension should be locked more strongly. Form a surgical knot by wrapping the needle holder twice. Set the tension by pulling the suture parallel to the wound. Bring the left hand end to the right to lock the knot. Additional knot is formed without pulling the suture end. When a tension is higher, the suture may become loose. The wound opened after not tying. In such a case, after you bring the left end to the right, bring the right end to the left. Another locking point is created. The both ends can be released and additional knots are formed without pulling the suture end. Okay, that's all for this lecture. In this lecture, we learned how to adjust and keep the suture tension of the skin closure by locking the knot. Perform appropriate knot tying. Set the tension by pulling the suture ends in appropriate direction. Lock the knot by pulling the suture ends in appropriate direction. Additional knot tying. These are other options when the wound tension is too high. The assistant holds the wound during the skin closure. Perform accessory sutures with more rigid suture and remove them after you finish the wound closure.
In real patients, the blood clot or serum functions like glue, so to keep suture tension will be easier. There are some special knot tying techniques to increase tension gradually without loosening. They will be introduced in other videos. This channel will provide variable techniques in your daily clinical work. If you like this video, please give thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching.